What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash petty revenge. This story's called, Truck Drivers Who Won't Turn Off Their Engine? I Can't Hear You! I work at a global company that ships out just about anything you can think of. Can arrive in two days with a monthly payment. You probably know what this is. I got this, I got this, I got this. I hop! I don't think that's right. My department works partially outdoors. I am usually outside, making sure the drivers get to their doors, drop off trailer, pick up loads, etc. Usually, the drivers are awesome. They come in with their tractor trailers, stop at the line, turn off their engine, say hello. I tell them where they need to go, give the thumbs up, send on their way. Sometimes they don't turn off their engines. Sometimes they don't stop at the stop sign, which is where I am. Stop to talk to me, turn off engine. Easy. If they don't do either of those things, I speak softly, almost whispering. I have a staring contest until they pull forward and turn it off. It makes me feel a little bit better. Edit. I don't make life difficult on purpose with 99% of the drivers. If they can't turn off the engine due to mechanical reasons, I'll politely ask them to step out and we can talk and hear each other better. I want them to get checked in and out efficiently so they can be on their way to the next stop. If a manager is by, they make them turn them off. I'm not super bothered by it, but if they're whispering, loud truck rumbling, either step out or turn off. We both have jobs to do. Honestly, OP's right. It's simple courtesy and doesn't take more than a few seconds, as far as I know. Then again, I'm not a truck driver. In fact, I'm scared of truck drivers because every time I try to talk to them, they look at me all weird and they try to get me into their truck and they call me a lot lizard. Whatever the hell that is. <laughs> All right, this story's called, With Apologies to Anyone Who Sows. I was raised by my abusive grandparents. My grandfather isn't worth mentioning, and my grandmother died when I was 15. She had an aneurysm while on the toilet, dying with the same grace she had while alive. I'm in my mid-30s now, and I don't often think of her, but I do keep one small, petty habit. Grandmother was a seamstress, and her most prized possession was a pair of of super sharp, fancy, expensive dressmaking shears. I once used them to cut paper, and she made me sleep on the porch for a week. For those who have said this seems like a random punishment, she was abusive. If I was going to be an animal, then I should be treated like one and sleep outside. It wasn't about the scissors. It was about me existing in her line of sight when she wanted to lash out. When she died, one of the few things I asked for were those scissors. I have used them to cut everything, bought fabric, for the last two decades. I use and ruin them in the kitchen for crafts, for projects around the house. The other day, I used them as a hammer when I was too lazy to grab the toolbox. It's stupid and petty, but nothing beats the tiny spark of malicious glee that I feel every time that I use those freaking scissors to cut duct tape and then pry open a paint can. Here's to you, Nana. I hope you went to heaven because I know there's nothing you hated more than the happiness of others. Edited to add, thank you to all the commenters. It's been 20 years since she died. I've had a lot of therapy, became part of a loving family, and I have a wonderful, interesting life the best revenge I could have. I still have the odd time when childhood trauma raises its ugly head, but even my worst days are happier than any day when she was alive. The scissors are just something that makes me laugh and a good reminder that she can't actually hurt me anymore. Thank you for all the warm wishes, be good to each other, and may you all have health, happiness, and the occasional joy of petty revenge. You know what? That's badass revenge plus ultra as frick. This story's called, After 23 years of mistreatment, mom uses grandmother's sorry petticoats as guinea pig bedding. I literally found out about this yesterday, and I'm still laughing at my mom's pettiness. <laughs> Petticoat, pettiness, petty revenge, nice. My parents have just finished up an incredibly messy divorce due to my dad having several mental illnesses that he refused to get treatment for, stealing marital money, being emotionally and financially 
financially abusive, cheating, and a plethora of other crap. For as bad as he is, his parents, specifically his mother, are worse. The garbage my paternal grandmother has put my mom through could be its own post, or its own novel, to be honest, but let me try to provide some context. We are Indian, but my parents immigrated to America after marriage and had my sister and I in the USA. My grandma kicked my mom out of the apartment after mom gave birth to me, threw her passport in her face, and told her to get the fridge out and go back to India since she thinks she's so smart and independent. Grandma denies it ever happening now. Last year, when my grandparents visit, they stole a lot of valuable stuff from the house to make sure it wouldn't go to my mom in the divorce. They also got their green card so they could officially move here, and left behind suitcases full of their clothes. My father and his parents have lived to make my mom miserable for 23 years, and she has finally gotten free. Once the house sells, we can officially go to North Carolina with that whole side of the family. However, we can't do that until the house sells. Now here comes the petty revenge. My mom was cleaning the house for another house showing when she found my grandparents' suitcases full of clothes. She took all of my grandmother's petticoats, used when wearing a sari, and tore them up. And we now use them as bedding for my two guinea pigs. Anyone who has had guinea pigs know that while they are adorable, they are stanky and love to poop and pee wherever they feel like it. I know it's a tiny revenge, but it makes me so happy to know that my piggies are frolicking amongst that witch's torn petticoats. And when she finally comes back here, she won't have anything to wear. <laughs> oh, butts on the ground, it fell off. Laugh too hard. Edit. Holy crap, I did not expect this many people to enjoy our petty piggy revenge. <laughs> Thanks for all the support of comments, messages, and awards. It took my mom, sister, and I a long time to get to this point, but now we're all happily chilling with our various rodent children. We probably won't be sending them pictures of our handiwork or interfering with their green cards just because we literally don't want to interact with them ever again. But if we change our minds, you'll be the first to know. Also, since people seem interested, I might post some more stories of my bat crap crazy paternal family, so be on the lookout. Please keep your fingers crossed that this house sells ASAP. I hope it sells too, but I'm not sure of the condition of the real estate market, especially in your particular area, given the current conditions of the world. Then again, I don't know anything about the real estate market anywhere to begin with. So there's that. Although at one point I was going to get my real estate license because, well, that line of work is pretty attractive. Like all you pretty party people in the comments, why don't y'all leave your Instagrams and stuff in the comments and shout yourselves out? Who knows, I might follow some of you. This story's called, Tricked My Mom Into Finally Admitting That My Cooking Was Good. I've been enrolled in a cooking school for over a year. Badass! And my mom, she's never been supportive. Not badass. Because I dropped out of a nursing program to get into a cooking school. Hey, you do you, boo. She's always making snide comments about how I should have been a nurse or a lawyer. Or how I'll only ever be a subservient housewife with this and when I do make something, she always criticizes it. Like she's Gordon Ramsay or something. Oh, too much salt. It's under court. It looks like crap. Even though pretty much everyone else says the opposite. She's looking for any little thing she can critique about my cooking. She keeps telling me I can't cook and need to get into a real career. I've cooked three course dinners for the family and they always get positive reviews. Except for her. She had a party for her work friends. I made a whole tray of my specialty take on homemade meatballs, a recipe I conceptualized myself my signature dish, I need to try it. Everyone kept going back and getting more, so many that they ran out. I asked my mom what she thought. She said, they were drunk, they couldn't taste anything. So I figured if I wanted to get her to compliment my cooking, I'd have to trick her. I cooked her a meal, one of her favorites from scratch. Her biggest weakness that she can never resist. Dressed it up to look professional and put it in a generic to-go box. 
box and had my boyfriend take video of me preparing it start to finish. I called her and told her that my boyfriend and I were eating at this diner that doesn't exist, made up a fake name for it and everything. I told her that they had her favorite meal and asked if she wanted us to bring her one. Of course, she said yes. I brought the dish and told her more about the fake dinner. She started eating it and complimented how good it was, how she wanted to go there and get another one. After she was almost through with the meal, I asked her for her honest opinion so we could write a review on Yelp. She went on for 10 minutes about how great it was, and then I sprung it on her that I cooked it. Her tone changed. She put the fork down and said she was lying that it tasted like crap. My boyfriend showed her the video. She googled the restaurant and it didn't show up. She started pointing out the flaws with the meal, like how there was too much sauce and it was really spicy and burned her mouth. I asked her why she almost finished the whole thing if it was so spicy. She didn't say anything. So I just asked her if she was ready to admit it. She said no, so we left her, but I spotted her eating it from the other room. I asked her again and she laughed and finally told me yes, that I'm a good chef. So, after a year of doubting I was a good chef and holding my dreams back, she finally admitted it. Ah, that is so freaking sweet! First of all, you are a freaking champ. Culinary school is badass. Cooking is badass. I like cooking. It's fun. Anyway, your mom sucks that she's not supportive or she wasn't from the beginning at least, but hey, maybe this is a turning point. You know what I'm saying? Who knows? Anyway, congratulations I bet that felt amazing. All right, this story's called Caught Littering? Make sure your car tax is up to date. I was driving along, minding my own business, when the car in front of me braked suddenly. No big deal. I always leave a generous gap in case things like that happen. Thinking nothing of it, I carried on driving. I then noticed the driver of the car in front of me was smoking a cigarette. Again, no big deal. No law against smoking while driving unless there's a child passenger in the UK. Okay. But then I see the driver throw their cigarette butts out of the open window. I hate littering, and I like to find ways to entertain myself while driving. So I decided to memorize the car's number plate because why not? If they're careless enough to litter without a second thought, maybe they're also careless enough to not keep up with their responsibilities as a car owner, i.e. their car insurance and MOT, or annual inspection. When I got home, I wanted to see if I could still remember that number plate from earlier and was successful. I entered it into the UK government website to check whether this car's tax and MOT is up to date. What did I find? The tax is overdue by a month. The car was being driven illegally. Being caught with an untaxed vehicle can incur a fine of up to a thousand pounds. As I said, I really hate littering. So I submitted an anonymous report online with the car's detail to inform the DVLA that the car's tax is out of date. I doubt anything will come of it, and as the report was being submitted anonymously, I'll never know if the driver will see any consequences, but it's nice to know that it's possible. All because they don't use a damn ashtray in their car. Edit! Didn't expect more than about two upvotes on this, <laughs> and wasn't seeking validation either, but I'm glad this isn't being seen as evil or a massive overreaction. I just thought it was funny, as I'm not usually petty and have never reported illegal stuff before. Littering just really rubs me the wrong way. As for the actual penalty for being caught without car tech, tax in the UK, if anyone is interested. The initial consequence is an 80 pound fine. If it's paid within 20 days of receiving a letter, the fine can be reduced to just 40 pounds. It's only if letters get ignored and the case gets taken to court that the fine could get anywhere close to 1,000 pounds. Monthly computer checks are also run by, so the driver may already be aware of the discrepancy or will be soon anyway. So I definitely have an exposed and otherwise unseen crime. I don't enjoy the thought of personally making someone receive a fine anywhere close to that maximum, as there's a pandemic, etc. I just wanted to share my petty story. <laughs> Doing God's work, OP. Go and squash those litter bugs. Or at least find them. This story's called, Be a Miserable Old Homophobe? Enjoy scraping out your can. I used to drive asphalt for a living. 
Truckers are redneck buttholes for the most part, but there was this one who really just took the cake for hatefulness. There were a couple of queer drivers in the yard, including one was trans, and while they were frequently laughed about by nearly everyone, this guy really hated them. His voice was loud and angry and miserable that he was forced to put up with their presence in his reality, and he let us know at every opportunity that queers didn't belong there. So anyway, before you load the hot asphalt in your truck, you spray diesel all over the bottom and sides of the can. The diesel prevents the tar and the asphalt from sticking, so it all slides out into the paver. You pull up on either side of a catwalk out in the middle of the yard to do the spraying. And sometimes, if you're spraying and a truck pulls up on the other side, you just turn and spray the other guy's can for him. Cause it's hella easy for you to just take a few seconds to do it, versus them having to set their brakes, put on the helmet and vest, etc. You don't do it if there's a lineup cause you've got a guy behind you, but when it's not busy, it's a courtesy we do for each other sometimes. So anyway, one day I'm spraying and that angry old frick pulled up and asked my bisexual ass to spray his can for him. I held my my arm out and waved it around like I was spraying it, but I didn't turn on the diesel. He thanked me and drove off with the bone dry can. The cooter. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.